The gospel reading today is a very quick gospel reading. Um, it is only just a little commentary on the gospel reading, and it is only found uh, in Luke. Um, it is one of the resurrection stories where Jesus resurrects somebody uh, during his ministry, during his time uh, on, er on earth when he entered into history. And so there was a couple of interesting things to just, uh, just point out that may not be, be picked up. So if we look at the situation that presented itself here, if we read back preceding this event, Jesus has just returned now from healing the centurion's servant. So the centurion came to Christ and said, you know, can you heal my servant? And Jesus said, I will come to the house. And he says, you don't need to do that. Your word alone will make him well. And now the servant is well. And it says, soon afterwards, now Jesus and his disciples, this is important. He takes his disciples with him and they enter into this town of Nain. Nain still exists today. It's by Mount Tabor. But it is, again, only mentioned in Luke. This is the only place in the Bible where you hear this town of Nain. All right. So the other thing we notice is that he uses the word neaniske. So nea, nu. So neaniske is kind of a, a polite term for someone who is young. So typically we see that this is now a person who is probably less than 40, less than 30, a younger man, and we know that she is a widow. And it also says now, Ios monogenis, which means, which means the only begotten. Well, we wouldn't use the term begotten, but we could, all right? So this was her only son. So Luke is making, you know, Luke is the detail guy. Out of all the disciples, Luke is the detail guy, all right? So he's providing these very specific details. Young man, under 30 or 40, and the widow does not have a husband, okay? And this is an only son. So she is now going to be in a very difficult situation. Living at that time, it was the son or the father, the sons that would provide the help around the house, that would provide the income. So now Luke is setting up this story so that we see that this woman is going to be put in a very difficult situation, all right? But we also see now that it says, ke ochlus polis. So there was a crowd that was following. So that means, as we have in our church here, that means that the community was there to be with the widow now. Now it says only son. That doesn't mean she didn't have other children. All right, so at least we see that the community is there. And so now, the point that I want to bring out is that typically in the, in the New Testament, Jesus performs his signs and miracles in one of three ways. The first way he does it is that the person requests it. This is when the, leper, the lepers come up to them and they say, oh, son of David, have mercy on me. So there is a request from that person and now Jesus grants that request. The second way is the centurion. Someone grants a request on behalf of someone else. It wasn't the servant that asked Jesus to heal him. It was the centurion himself who said, would you do this for me, for my servant? And this is again what Christ does. And the third way is what we have here, is that without any request, Jesus performs the miracle. So it says here, out of compassion, he saw her, and in his humanity, and equally so, in his divinity as the all-merciful and loving God, he comes to her, and he says to her, do not weep, foretelling now the miracle that will happen, the miracle of resurrection. And notice again, this is just a touch. Now, there's been other times where Jesus has said the word, as in the case of the centurion, and the miracle has happened. But in this case, it does say that he touched the funeral beer, just the beer, not necessarily, the, or not the, not the person, all right? And now there is another interesting comment that comes up. 
So he says to him, arise. He gives the word. He is the word of God. So he gives the word, and now you see him, he rises up. Luke tells us that he sits up and speaks. What's the point of that? The point is that when Jesus performs his miracles, he restores the person to complete health. So it's not like you go into the doctor and he cures you of something like my hip transplant. I didn't pick up my palate and walk, right? There was some therapy that needed to happen, but the doctors performed the operation, but I got better over time. With Jesus' miracles, him as the Son of God, as God himself now, in his miracles, restores to perfect health, complete health. We see this of the man born blind. We see this now also then in the widow's son. So that's an important part to take away. So how do I want to connect this to who we are as Orthodox? We have the sacrament of holy unction. All right? And many times people will ask me, they will say, Father, can you come to the hospital and can you now anoint my person who is sick or dying or whatever it is? The sacrament of anointing is something that is supposed to return us to perfect health because it's not the grace that comes from the priest or the bishop. It is the grace that comes now through God. And that anointing, in certain cases, will restore the person to perfect health together with science, together with the medical community and all that. And together, that synergia, the person is restored to perfect health. There are times when that anointing will not, will not restore them to perfect health and they will die or they will not get better. But the second component, the second part of the holy unction is the restoration of their spiritual nature, of that divine spark that is in them. And that is always restored to perfect health. So that in the event that they do not get better, then what unction does is it also then re-whitens the baptismal garment that we received when we were baptized. And holy unction serves this, this same purpose that you see Jesus here serving today, is in this case a restoration to perfect health. But unction gives us both a physical healing and a spiritual healing, but we may not always see necessarily the physical healing, but we will always receive the physical preparation. And there has been a recent death here in the parish, and I was able to see in the young man that I anointed, I was able to see a spiritual transformation in him, a preparedness for what was coming. And that, to me, was proof of what I have just said here, is that the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Jesus Christ now, brought this man not out of death, but restored him spiritually to being what we say is the children of God. And that was a very, very beautiful thing to see in real life what now is being said in Scripture.